So Peter and uh, Jaromir from uh, Avast, um, again on DDoS, but again with the country with a C letter. <laughs> uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello. W welcome. Um, Chinese chicken uh, multi-platform DDoS botnets. The first part of the title will be explained later. The second part is uh, saying uh, about uh, our topic. So we will foc focus on uh, uh, binaries uh, that are for Linux uh, operating systems for various platforms uh, that are responsible for flooding attacks. Yesterday we have heard a talk uh, by uh, Nick Sullivan. He explained in details uh, the flooding methods and uh, trends in 2014. Uh, now we will show which binaries could be responsible for part of those attacks. So we start with, with the history, basically what uh, happened in past year. Uh, then we bring some common characteristics of those binaries and uh, we show an example of advertisement and uh, methods how uh, attackers uh, accomplished uh, infection of systems and make making uh, their tools uh, working. And then we, in details, describe the main and most in important uh, families, uh, Elknot and Bill Gates, and Mr. Black, IP Table, SX, Xordidos, Ghost Red, and we conclude with some statistics and victim preferences. So uh, our first first uh, reference is a talk from uh, Virus Bolton 2011 in Barcelona. It uh, says something about contemporary Chinese uh, DDoS malware. Uh, but all of those were for Windows uh, platform. Our story started in November 2013 when we, when we, the first builder arrived uh, on our backend uh, that uh, was able to produce Linux flooding bots. Uh, actually, <coughs> we did not notice that at that time. Uh, in November two uh, 2013, a few articles started to appear on the web uh, that were that referred to to hacked hacked uh, web servers uh, with these tools. Uh, then in December 2013, Malware Must Die uh, summarizes uh, that uh, th those reports uh, in uh, this article. Uh, in February 2014, uh, uh, security researcher Waldik SS uh, firstly mentioned a bot with strings uh, Bill and Gates in, in, in the binary. In March 2014, uh, we referred uh, to the previous re research uh, as uh, Elknock, Malknock, Mal Malware family. This is the first mention of Elknock on Twitter, I guess. Uh, in uh, May 2014, Dr. Webb uh, published uh, again some, some blog about the DDoS Trojans for Linux, and it, it, it was mentioned, Mr. Black was mentioned for the first time. And then a few, few blog posts from Kaspersky uh, uh, came and uh, one of those uh, also explained infection vector. Uh, two, two reports from Prolexic uh, in September 2014 uh, about IP table SX and uh, Mr. Black uh, malware family were published. And uh, th 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 in these reports we, we, we could uh, uh, have seen also some numbers of volume of these threats. I at this period already malware must die published uh, plenty of articles uh, related to these uh, kind of attacks. So perhaps uh, the, the attention of security re researcher were already caught. Meanwhile, ESET uh, published a report of uh, some, uh, some APT uh, with uh, Windows Ghost right behind. And now we are infection chain. OK, so let's look at the the infection chain. So basically we started with one uh, compromised server on which the attackers installed one service or one program which was HTTP file server and on this server okay. okay, is it better now? So on, th on, this compromised on, on this compromised server the attackers uploaded bunch of files which were later downloaded and shared by the botnet and among these files we found a uh, lot of interesting binaries, a lot of interesting 
text strings, some of binaries belong to Linux, some of them belong to Windows. So this was a very good source of information. So basically these binaries were in some cases ELF malware pieces which were compiled by the custom bot builders. Among these binaries we could also find some hacking tools like various port scanners and so on. Interesting thing was that some of these binaries should we should or we were testing them only in virtual machines because some of them were infected by file infectors. Like we don't know if it is by mistake or just if there was some intention of the attackers. So in the beginning, attackers ran port scanners on various IP, IP ranges, and depending on open ports which are opened, they might identify the services which were running on these machines and depending on the services they tr they tried various types of exploits some of them were related to Elasticsearch, Shell Shellshock, Apache Struts and Tomcat some vulnerabilities for Windows various vu they used various vulnerab vulnerabilities for privilege escalation some of these vulnerabilities are, are mentioned in, in this slide it is uh, this was just one method they used the exploit and the second method was just SSH brute force attack so basically they had two lists or they had lists of passwords and list of names and they were trying to all the possible combinations until they locked into into the machines which they wanted to compromise or not interesting thing is that many of these attacks were run from windows machines but they were targeting the linux servers these are examples of some of these tools which, which we found on, uh, on these file sharing services. These are examples of port scanners. The first one is the port scanner completely written in, or on in a graphic or, or in an interface completely in Chinese where the attackers specify the IP range and ports they should be scanned and after then they run the process itself. They also use some like available third-party port scanners like WindEggDrop. This is the example of login and password brut brute forcers. The right one, they called SSH 2.1. It was like used for like brute forcing Linux machines. The other one is called DU Brute. It was targeting the Windows server machines. In some of these uh, some of these archives on on these compromised machines, we found a list of IP ranges which they were targeting. And we found also files with password lists. You can see it on this slide. And in also in one case, we found some results of these port scanning processes. So we can see that they scanned a few millions of addresses for the port 22, and when it was opened, it was ready for like another attacks. Let's talk about uh, common characteristics of uh, those binaries that we have seen. So basically, the all of them, uh, those were trojanized flooding tools, and uh, mm, they, they contained uh, resources uh, for Chinese locale. Some of these variants were written in uh, C++ because we have seen objects and classes. Uh, debug info were not, often not, not were not stripped. And uh, all these these uh, Trojan families uh, supported uh, similar flooding methods, and uh, communi communication protocol uh, was based usually on uh, one byte grammar. And all these these uh, families uh, <laughs> were coming with a script that was responsible for killing uh, competing processes that uh, could consume resources. Uh, what we have uh, seen uh, was uh, an, uh, a fact that uh, these binaries were not often in plain form, but sometimes they were, com were coming packed with UPX and not, uh, not often with the, the usual UPX as we are used to. Uh, some of the files have uh, modified uh, the UPX magic, which is UPX exclamation mark. Uh, a sample uh, connected to Mr. Black family uh, had uh, uh, was uh, altered in a way that uh, all three checksums were incorrect. And uh, the official unpacking tool UPX with uh, the parameter D is uh, very sensitive to to these uh, uh, to these values because uh, of not producing invalid data. Another family IP table SX uh, was altered in even more complicated way 
And uh, what we have to say is that uh, uh, this original OPX tool does not recover even with one change uh, that we mentioned here. And uh, the, the second thing is that the dynamic behavior is not altered at all. So at this slide we will see three pictures. The picture at the top is the beginning, is the, is the head of the file of an ELF executable. It is a 32-bit binary. And, uh, at the picture in the middle we see the original tail section of this file with uh, a UPX header, PEG header data. And uh, at the picture at the bottom we see which modifications uh, had to be made just to make the official UPX tool work for this sample. So we, we see that there's about five, five modifications and for certain it's not a coincidence. Actually, this, this file is a requesting 64-bit method from the official tool, unpacking tool, but it is a 32-bit binary, so of course the official tool would fail uh, because he, it would read from wrong offsets. Uh, a few, a few, again, few, a few checksums are altered. Uh, now, now we'll, uh, let's show an example of uh, advertisement of this flooding tool. This is in Chinese, so let's see a translation. I would stress a sentence, uh, customize a variety of attack software and source code generator. Favorable price, we come to inquire and uh, QQ contact below. And now switch to tools. Okay, so let's look at the first flooding tool, which is named Elknot. It was characterized by presence, like some configuration files with the kind of specified file names like fake.cfg or xmi.ini and this tool was ported to many different operate or the several different operating systems and architecture including Linux 32 bit 64 bit Windows 32 bit or also 64 bit version free free BSD version all these tools have in common one thing that they are very simple grammar for communicated with CNC server which, which su supports bas basically four simple commands one is the start flooding task the second one is to stop it the third one is to write a fake configuration and the last command is just sending status status or current status back from the infected machine to cnc server so this is these are examples of bot builders which attackers used to create new binaries with different configurations so the first one is th the first bot builders we named them text box builders because they are really very simple they only contain one or two text boxes with where the attacker specifies the address of CNC server and in one case they also can specify the port and after pressing the build it creates the the binary which which is uh, which is responsible for for DDoSing interesting thing is that all these tools are Windows executable and they produce the Linux binary which is packed in UPX and which has hard coded configuration in, in the inside of them. The next builder which we call the chicken builder is the most advanced builder. The name chicken is given after after the, the thing that it produces some binaries which contain the string chicken in their debug strings and this builder is much more complex and it can produce a lot of d different binaries. On the right side you can see that it supports many different architectures. On the left side is generator for command and control panels where the attackers can specify for example a restriction for MAC address so the panel cannot run like on any machine but only on machine with a specific MAC address. So the tool for Linux, when, when it starts, first it needs to collect some statistics from the infected machine. These statistics are later displayed on the command and control panels. So in case of Linux, it goes to some several files in pros directory and it reads and parses some information from them. The interesting information are, for example, the, the CPU frequency or like the amount of, you know, amount of CPU cycles which are consumed on the, on, on on the machine or also they are interested in the bandwidth or the, the amount of bytes which are like data which are coming through the network on the machine. So before we mention that the configuration is hard coded into binary so 
in case of this hard coding it's not written directly but there is simple encryption so basically we have the string and in the beginning the decryption algorithm takes the string and from the first byte it subtracts number one from the to the second byte it adds one and so on it continues until it decodes the port and IP address of the CNC server. The statistics which which I mentioned before in, in case of Linux it was parsing several files in in pros directory in case of Windows it uses it needs the same information but it needs to use different methods to get this data so it use performance monitors to get the number of bytes which flow like through the network it also needs to go to registry and get some other information like CPU frequency so for this is the example with the st where the string chicken is located in uh, debug information so basically when these when these tools infects the system it creates the dir directory in program files it names itself with suspicious name like svchost.exe and the, the dropper has two two different versions one for 32 bit one for 64 bit version in all possible cases or in most cases it installs just 32 bit version 64 bit version is run only or dropped or installed only on systems which are 64 bit only for example windows server 2008 and in addition to the main file it drops like two more two more files which are related to packet to analyze to accessing the, the packets in uh, in the network which are these two files are part of winpicket project so these are examples of the command and control panels so you can see two different panels both of them look more or less the same in the middle there is the list of infec infected machines and on the in the right one you can see that on the panel there is one infected machine you can read its operating system it's some other statistics which we parsed before like cpu usage flow of of uh, on the network and cpu frequency and in the bottom part you can see some controls through which the attackers can use can specify which attack should start so you can see like in this example they can specify the the IP address of the target they can specify which kind of flooding attack they prefer it's like sane attack UDP attack and yeah this is this is another another CNC panel this one was generated from the chicken builder it is slightly more complex it has few more buttons but again the the idea is always the same the list of infected infected machines and the tasks which are performed so the next tool which we would like to mention is Bill Gates it's named after two files which it creates in temporary file one of them is Bill lock and the second one is Gates lock so after it, it was named in these files it just stores some process IDs of itself and this tool is basically it's kind of extension of the previously mentioned Elknot flooding tool it supports few more methods I think we could mention like DNS amplification we won't go into the details because it was mentioned yesterday in the presentation and this tool this tool also like installs itself or establishes the persistence it's done by creating the script in etc directory it also does some modification or adds some commands to crontap it's all it also kills some competing processes so on in the left part we can see that with certain intervals it kills some processes with certain names on the right side it's done uh, th th it's the task out it's auto update so basically each two hours it goes to one of these http file servers as we mentioned in the beginning and downloads new binaries and later it starts them again the configuration is not is also hard coded in the binary but it's not as simple as in the previous case where in where there was only just subtracting and adding just one 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 byte or one 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 value from each byte in this case there is like cus custom implementation of rsa encryption and here in the screenshot we can see that we run the, the sample in linux debugger and we found at some place that 
there were like few strings and after the decryption we got the configuration data. The configuration data al always also includes IP address, the port and some other information like should there be persistence or not and some kind of name suffixes. There is also a version of Bill Gates for Windows. You can see again the debug string is somehow similar to the version of El Elknot. The dropper also has two versions, one for 32-bit, one for 64-bit version. But in this case, there is not just one file drop, there is like one more file. So in case of 32-bit version, it drops two files. And one of them is the flutter itself, and the second one is the binary which we identified to be the Agony Rootkit, whose source code was published on one of these Chinese source code sharing websites in 2006. So this is for 32-bit version, for 64-bit version, which is which only also aims just 64-bit only systems like Windows Server 2008. It also drops like few more drivers related to packet packets, packet filters, and it also drops like some binaries which belong, which we identified to belong to Safe Engine Protection Engine, and in the samples which we ho which we ho had these protections were not implemented yet but I think there is the plan to to make it kind of more protected and harder for reverse engineers to look inside uh, okay uh, more families um, mr. black um, just a note uh, uh, there's a report of some family called AES DDoS and we think that it is a subfamily of this one it uh, this family could be characterized but uh, by presence of string version X, Mr. Black Hacker deal with DDoS and so on. Uh, it is uh, very robust because it supports a variety of uh, flooding procedures. Uh, for example, CC flood is a uh, uh, HTTP uh, get, uh, get attack. Uh, and also it is the most flexible one because it was uh, compiled for variety of uh, uh, platforms, 32 and 64 bit uh, Linux, MIPS, ARM and also Windows. Uh, but by those exotic uh, platforms, uh, we may infer that uh, the, the attackers uh, try to attack uh, server uh, routers, Internet of Things devices, or ARM servers, uh, and so on. At a proxy report, uh, this uh, family is connected with attacks that peaked at uh, 215 uh, gigabits uh, per second. Uh, another family, IP, IP table SX, uh, it, is, it, 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 it comes with, uh, with an extensive list of uh, processes that is needed to kill. We highlighted uh, groups that uh, are connected with uh, elk node that are highlighted with green color. The red color are names of processes for Bill Gates and there are some general general proce process names, uh, minored, uh, highlighted with blue. Th this family uh, is uh, definitely a Trojan because uh, it achieves its persistence in uh, the boot uh, directory. It supports two methods, synflood and DNS flood, and also it has an ability to self-update. A 32 bit variant for Windows uh, usually come with uh, names IP tables, uh, exe, and uh, get set up exe. Okay, thi this is an interesting family, XOR DDoS. It was reported by Malware Must Die in at the end of uh, September 2014. It is more advanced Trojan for 32 and 64 bit uh, Linux. Uh, it creates persistence by installing itself into the boot directory under the random name. Uh, it supports also two flooding uh, methods and uh, it is named after the presence of uh, a constant called XOR keys uh, which is used to uh, decrypt uh, uh, strings present in the binary. We have seen those uh, strings in plain form. Unfortunately, the URL was not uh, available at the time of our research. But what is uh, uh, really interesting about this one is that it contains an embedded rootkit uh, which was not reported at the end of September because it was not implemented uh, that time. Rootkit features uh, contain hide file, hide prods, hide TCP4, TCP6 ports, the same for UDP and also some firewall modifications. And the Trojan communicates from a uh, user space 
with uh, uh, with this rootkit, uh, which uh, exists in the kernel uh, via IO control command with some specific code. Th this is an analogy wi to Windows API function uh, device IO control. And uh, finally, ghost thread. This is an infamous uh, f family. It exists uh, out there for ages, but uh, we need to stress that it is uh, only for Windows. Uh, its uh, source code is uh, shared on Chinese websites. And uh, also, there's a huge number of samples connected with this thread. And the presence of strings chicken and hacker uh, like uh, 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 make our reason even more to name our our talk like uh, Chinese chicken. Uh, on the picture basically there's a CNC panel and uh, this is not just the flooding tool, it uh, supports more uh, backdoor capabilities. Okay, let's talk s something about statistics. Uh, actually there's uh, always it's hard to measure botnet if you do not have a, uh, access to the CNC panel but uh, Actually, th 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 these bots were connected with HFS uh, servers, and uh, th these servers store number of downloads. Uh, th this uh, number, 37,000 da almost uh, downloads of some file that was Bill Gates, uh, actually does not represent uh, the botnet size because it is just an upper bound because uh, of that uh, self-updating uh, capability. Another another panel with some huge numbers, and there were plenty of more uh, these HFS uh, servers running these bots. So these botnets could be quite quite large. Okay, thi this uh, word map represents uh, the preference of file names for those elf bots. Uh, actually, the the larger the font is, the the higher number of unique samples uh, are is connected to that name, so we can recognize. Uh, the, the IP table SX uh, family and uh, names for Bill Gates. Uh, all those small small names are connected with elk not uh, coming from bot builders. Th th there's there was a huge var variety of uh, naming elk not bots, and uh, I would point to 3502. Uh, that is the uh, download name for Xordidos uh, Trojan. Okay, victim preferences. We monitored botnets uh, for a while, and uh, we have seen that mostly uh, small and medium-sized businesses are under attack. So online gaming sites, casinos, e-commerce shops, forums. Potential methods of monetization. Uh, our predecessor, uh, Dennis Schwartz, uh, told that DDoS as a service is an option, also paying ransom for stopping the DDoS attacks. And our, our experiments uh, run like we we monitored the comments with IPs and then we try to reach those IPs and we just uh, see some uh, web pages like online gaming, online casinos, uh, e-shops, and f forums. And this forum is probably connected with social engineering because of that section zero day vulnerability. Okay, let's summarize what we have heard. Chinese flooding tools continue in tradition of DDoS attacks, but now they are they are ported to uh, Linux operating systems. Uh, pointing to to XOR DDoS, we can say that the complexity of Linux Trojan has slightly increased, and we are talking about uh, threads that happened uh, in the past year. Actually, the 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 good or fast development of these tools is supported by code sharing through Chinese forums. We see that uh, online services uh, are under attack and those for which online availability is crucial. And the last point is that uh, uh, UP expect binaries that were coming from bot builders, uh, they are kind of, uh, they are source of kind of polymorphism for, for the, the attackers. So it we could say that perhaps there's an intentional AV evasion technique and the question is that if it's right time to include the static unpacker for elf UPX into an AV engines because it would be perhaps better to see that hidden content uh, of these files. So, acknowledgement, we'd like to thank li to Ling Song from University of Iowa who provided us uh, an extensive uh, number of uh, samples that were caught on his honeypots and also to Mr. Benkov, that is a Twitter handle who provided us a list of uh, active IPs of HFS servers. Uh, thank you for your attention.
Thank you. We have the time for one question. You're all shy tonight? Giovanni, you have a question. <laughs> oh, you were stretching. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.